Daniel Ruiz Tyson is available for Monday the 5th of October 2020 with me Daniel Ruiz Tyson episode 274 hope you're all healthy keeping on doing what you need to be doing to keep yourself going to keep yourself existing in this uh, pandemic era it was a relentlessly wet weekend in London it was like Blade Runner it's a bit better today, a bit brighter, certainly continues to be cold. Our weather this year hasn't transitioned. We've just jumped from summer to winter. Where is autumn? That's what I'd like to know. Where is the transition? Monday really given me the Monday treatment today. It's uh, been a long morning, a late record as a result. I try to record by about 1,100 hours at the latest on a Monday. It's already 1,350 hours evening run today looking the only possibility and it's certainly something that I'll need to get me out of here hopefully without getting locked in the park this time almost happened again on Friday more on that later I've got eight tops on treated myself to well it was actually only meant to be a short blast of heating from the oil filled radiator in the front room essentially to dry out the trainers, which were still wet from Friday evening's run. The voices go in. You'll have to excuse that. I I don't know what it is. Might be stress. Might be a lot of shouting this morning. I forgot the uh, oil-filled radiator was on. I was kicking myself for wasting money. Hot water bottle debuted last night for uh, winter 2020 on my aunt's advice. Slept with a hat again, and I'm guessing that my scalp this winter is going to be much colder because the mullet stroke bouffant has gone. Something to be said for the bouffant in uh, winter. Realised around 10am this morning that I think it was my fourth top that was giving me the problems. I hadn't slipped my arm through the sleeves. I tend to put the tops on in bundles. I've got Two bottom layers, they get changed every day after a shower. I've got the middle layers, they get washed twice a week. And then I've got the exterior layers, the big layers, comprised of a really thick zip-up jumper and a fleece. They get washed once a week. I think it was the fourth top where I'd failed to put the sleeves on properly. So I had to tackle that, by which time I'd already used up nearly 90 minutes of my monthly riff-raff allocated minutes trying to deal with one of my aunt's repair issues. I tell you what, it's lucky that I have so few friends, so the loss of these minutes won't impact on me in the way that they would probably impact on you. But if this was 10 years ago when I was more sociable and popular, I would definitely be feeling the impact. I'd probably already have sent out a, a not a group text because I never did that, probably a group email just saying to people, look, I'm running short of minutes. I've got another 12 days till the new monthly allocation of minutes kicks in bear that in mind if you don't hear from me and uh, you know the verve bittersweet symphony that's all i've been hearing for four or five hours today holding on various lines pass from one housing association to contractor back and forth the issue had been passed on to an external contractor they have said it would be done today or tomorrow no one's called me. It's all a bit vague. I've just got off the phone to them again about 30 minutes ago, by which time I was uh, raising the voice because they gave me a very vague, yeah, they're coming tomorrow morning. Well, what time tomorrow morning? Because I need to be there and I don't live with my aunt. So you need to give me a time. If it's early, fine. But I need to know. And, you know, we've already had one no show. As I was holding on to speak to someone, and at one point I was holding on for 42 minutes, it kept telling me, you're ninth in the queue, and I got as far as four, and I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I was trying various things to try and sort it out, I, you know, to try and calm myself down. I had the leg crossing going on as I got more wound up. I started pouting to stave off the jaw clench on the leg crossing, actually. It reminded me that among my earliest memories are remembering that when I was really, really little, I would be fascinated by the different ways that my parents crossed their legs. You know, my mum did the uh, feminine full-on legs cross, which uh, I think I tend to do myself. That doesn't uh, sound great now. My dad always, though, he did the ankle-on-ankle -ankle crossing, and that fascinated me, that distinction between the two. Anyway, I was trying to say to this person, this customer service person, who was about the fourth person I'd spoken to today. I was trying to explain, look, I can't have this vague 
time business when in the morning I need to be there between eight and one you know what am I going to do I'm going to turn up at my aunt's at eight in the morning what time will I have to leave here tomorrow morning Thursday's contract uh, was unmasked which really f me off you're turning up at the home of an elderly tenant and you're not wearing a mask. Forget the fact you don't even have gloves or any hand gel or whatever on you. Where is your mask? Oh, it's in the car. Well, that's no good. I had another situation, actually, before I go on with that uh, story. The library, Pimlico Library on Friday, unmasked guy in the queue because you've got to give your name and all your details on going into the library. You've got a hand gel as well. And I always make sure I use their hand gel, even though I've got my own just so they can see that I've gelled my hands and I use my own pen to put down my details. There was a guy behind me, didn't have a mask, very impatient, encroaching on people's spaces, did it downstairs as well. It's one thing that for whatever reason, you're not wearing a mask. Maybe you're exempt from wearing a mask. This guy just going by his behavior, I don't think it was anything to do with exemptions. I just think he's one of those annoying people who just will not wear a mask and will not respect social distancing. And he did it downstairs as well in the main library area. And these people, they're still out there. This, you know, this is where London is. This is why London is not improving. I think it is going to be a very long winter here so long as we got people like this out there and uh, just feeling the back of a tooth now. I ought not to. I got away with one last week, not having to pay for a fill-in. I don't need a fill-in. That's great news. But I think that behind my uh, top teeth, I suspect that the retainer may have snapped off at the back of uh, one of the teeth because it's been uh, annoying me for weeks now. It's not sharp, but it's catching. And if I go to my regular dentist, probably looking about £150 there because uh, they are pricey, those guys. Where was I? Okay. This unmasked contractor turns up at my aunt's. I stopped him from coming in. My aunt was trying to open the door without a mask. And I just thought, well, what would happen if I wasn't here? This is what she would do. She's alone. No one with her. She's just going to open the door to these people. And they're just going to step in without a mask. I stopped him in the doorway. I didn't pull the door back to let him in. I said, where's your mask? He said, it's in the car. My aunt hadn't put her own mask on, which infuriated me because it just makes me worry about what she's doing when there's no one there. So there was all that going on. We gave the guy a mask. He didn't put it on properly throughout his visit. I made sure that I put myself between him and my aunt. My aunt sat herself down in her chair. It was very clear from the beginning this guy wasn't particularly good at his job. I'd actually seen him as I went into my aunt's block. I saw a guy about 20 metres behind me in this red uniform. I didn't like his manner when he was walking in. There was just something that suggested he was a bit too casual, a bit of a maverick. And I said to myself, I remember noting, I thought, I hope that is not the guy. And it was because he turned up at my aunt's door about a couple of minutes after I'd stepped inside. So I hadn't even had a chance to remove my trainers. And sorry, I'm struggling with the voice here. It was clear from the beginning this guy wasn't up to the job. There was no toolbox. He hadn't been given all the information. We'd explained that there was an issue with the, uh, the handle as well on the balcony door. There was no key as well. Everything he did, my aunt was bitching about him in Spanish. I said to her, you know that he knows that you're talking about him. And she just fixed me with a look. He speaks Spanish. He doesn't need to speak Spanish, I told her, to know that you're speaking about him every time he does something. He only needs to twist his wrist with one of those Allen keys. You start talking in that critical tone right away. If I hadn't been there, I'm telling you, I think he would have tossed her over the balcony had he not actually mistakenly undone the tape on the handle, which for some reason would allow my aunt and uncle to actually open the balcony door because they'd lost the key. But now the balcony door after this guy's visit can't be opened. And I think that is probably that and my presence there are probably what stopped this guy from hurling my aunt over the balcony. He had no toolbox with him. He just had these Allen keys and my aunt was losing it. She kept getting up trying to get close to him. Meantime, I'm noting everywhere that he's touching with his bare hands. He's already touched the outside of my aunt's front door, had his hand, uh, I think, on the door handle out there. So that was the first thing I noted. Got to clean that. He was touching the glass of the balcony. He was touching the table, touching the back of the chairs. I'm making a note of this all the time. And I'm thinking, well, 
I'm remembering all this. I can remember whatever it is, 150-odd Star Wars football figures and what teams they play for. I think I can remember this. And my aunt was standing up trying to get closer to him to, you know, just have a go at what he was doing, trying to demonstrate what the issue was. It was like trying to keep a trophy dog from jumping at someone, you know, straining at the leash. I've never walked a dog ever, never walked a dog on a lead but it kind of felt like that, you know, for such a small, fragile person, she's still fairly strong. And I'm just thinking she needs to calm down. You know, I know she's got a lot on her plate. She was right. The guy was rubbish at his job. But, you know, we're supposed to be social distancing here. Don't get any closer to this guy. He's not even wearing his mask properly. So now that's meant to be getting resolved uh, tomorrow morning. And I've spent all this time and used up all these minutes today and they've still not actually given me uh, an exact time. And, you know, it's just tiring. So I'm really behind in my day. Today, I've lost quite a bit of my weekend with a laptop trying to resolve the word issue. I'm jumping through Microsoft support hoops. It all remains unresolved. I've got this eye strain. I've actually put my glasses back on to record this show, but... I find that my eyes actually feel more comfortable usually now without the glasses. And I explained that to the optician last week. He did say that in my situation, that makes sense. You're talking about the eyes again, Dave, just a little. The Liverpool result yesterday. I mean, I had to turn it off. It was just so bad. I hate silly results. I can handle a loss. And as I say, I'm not really, you know, these guys are millionaires. The, the You know, them winning the title after 30 years. It was a little emotional for me, really, because I was just thinking of where I was in my life 30 years ago. The people that liked Liverpool as well, that I grew up with, who are no longer here. You know, that all got to me a bit. I think it was just measuring where I was in my life back then. You're full of youth and optimism. I had the curtains. It was Manchester. You know, that was the Manchester era. And then, you know, finally, 30 years later... They finally land a title. That's emotional now. If they lose three or four games, 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, whatever, 3-1, I can handle that. 7-2. For a start, I couldn't enjoy the thrashing that United got yesterday at home to Spurs. But 7-2, I hate silly results like that. It's, I think, what was it, 10, 11 years ago, there was the 4-4 with Arsenal. There was a 5-5 with Arsenal last season, I think, as well in in the uh, League Cup. I don't like those kind of silly results. I'd rather lose a game than win a game. 5-4, 5-3. I think there was a 5-4 under Klopp early on in his reign. And I think it's a very weird time in football right now. There are lots of throwback results, throwback to an earlier era, I think, in the English game. And I'm not going to speak too long about this because I know a lot of you don't like football, which is fine. The English game right now, defensively, it's not that great, but it's full of brilliant attackers. And I just think that's why we're seeing a lot of goals And also, I think the fact that games are being played behind closed doors, I think it's leveling the playing field. And a lot of the big teams are struggling with that. I think, you know, Man City the previous week conceded five goals. I think there's something in that. So it's all very strange. But I don't like to see my team lose by that kind of scoreline. That is a stain on your club's history. And it will always be there, no matter what they win this year. I mean, if they win the league again, that will be a quiz question. You know, which team won the league despite losing 7-2 earlier in the season? I think in 2009, if I remember rightly, Norwich then in League One, which is the old third division, they lost their opening game of the season 7-1 at home. I think they were at home to Wickham. And what they did the following week is they poached the manager and he became the Norwich manager the following week. They walked the league that season. I think if Liverpool do the same thing here, it would be similar to that. So I turned the football off. I turned it off at 6-2 and I was certain there was going to be a seventh goal. And I was guilty later on of switching back to uh, Sky Sports main event and sure enough, I saw 7-2 and it just you just think this is embarrassing. I called my uncle. The phone was ringing initially, then it was as if someone had diverted the call. It went through to voicemail. He doesn't know how to use his voicemail, so it was pointless to leave a message. I called my aunt. I just said, look, tell him I called. I'll ring him tonight, as in tonight, Monday night. Uh, She said that he doesn't have voicemail. He told her he doesn't have voicemail. No, he has voicemail, I said. Everyone has voicemail on their mobile, whether they use it or not. It's just he doesn't know how to use it. So I didn't leave a message. My aunt said my uncle maintained he doesn't have voicemail. Who knew he had a unique phone? 
I didn't know that. There is no point trying to convince this man otherwise. It would be like the Champions League final every year where right until kickoff time, he's adamant that the final is being shown on ITV, which it hasn't been since uh, 2013. Let's bring you a quick breakfast update. Friday, the 2nd of October, toast. Saturday, crackers. Sunday, crackers. So crackers seize in the weekend slots. They're lighter than toast and Saturday sloth Saturday. Calzone night, of course, is good to go with a lighter breakfast. Sunday, I tend to have the oversized bowl of porridge for lunch and then a lighter snack in the evening and that oversized bowl of porridge coupled with the uh, the calzone. That can make the Monday run the hardest of the week. Sorry, I'm losing my thread there. Gone with the crackers at the weekend. Monday uh, this morning, toast. The bread's a little tough right now. If I was with a new partner and we were still at that stage of getting to know one another, I wouldn't risk that bread right now. Just too much mastication required. There would be too many awkward silences. I'd be worried about straying into girding territory as I try to grind that bread down, the tough bread down with my teeth. And I think the issue with that is simply that I was premature on the uh, new loaf buying 10 days ago, still had half a loaf left. I should have waited before I brought the uh, new loaf in. You're listening to Daniel Roy Tyson is available. Episode 274, Ways to Support the Show. iTunes reviews, just 30 seconds of your time. Rate, review, subscribe if you do enjoy the show. Bigger shows than this will ask you for a five-star rating. I'm no different, but uh, those requests don't really meet with any success. Follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at 1607WestEgg. Facebook.com forward slash DRT available. That issue, my end, is still ongoing. No joy on that. And that's despite that uh, post I did at DanielRuzTyson.com forward slash latest news. I put all the details of the issues affecting me at my end with that page, screenshots, etc. If anyone has a look at that and knows what the solution is, it's not proven easy. It's uh, beyond the grasp and understanding of a lot of people who know a lot more than me. If you're able to resolve this, please uh, do get in touch. There is a link on there for you to be able to do that. There are PayPal and Coffee links, coffee.com, where you can buy me a digital coffee if you're not subscribing to the Patreon show. Uh, those PayPal and Coffee.com links are at DanielRoosTyson.com. Any donation that you send will get you that week's bonus uh, content we transfer to you within the day. Most importantly, though, of course, the best way to support this work is via that Patreon page. Bonus content, as I say, every Thursday. Two tiers of support. A second tier is an introductory tier. For those of you unsure about committing to supporting the show, you can all pledge in your local currencies of euros, British pounds or US dollars. Patreon.com forward slash DRT available. Sign up there for a different kind of podcast. Join the A-team keeping this show alive. Can we make it to 20 this week? Drama. Show totes. Now just the one this week. Happy birthday, Monica. We've got it bad over here in the UK right now, but it's even worse in the States where she is. Will Monica get to celebrate another birthday? Will any of us get to celebrate another birthday? Happy birthday, Monica. I've had pain in the rear work going on late downstairs. All of a sudden, that work started on Tuesday evening. I touched on that on Thursday's last Thursday show, you know, bang in, and I'm just having to deal with it. I've dealt with it okay. It's annoying. I can say if you said to me at the start of the year, you'll have six, seven months with peace and quiet from the flat below you, you would have taken it. But if anything, right now, I think the good thing for me would be to get whoever's moving in downstairs to move in so I can get used to them. They can get used to me. I just find it strange that this work is going on right now, that they're furnishing the place just before the contractors are coming in to do all the windows. That bit just doesn't make sense. Just a lot going on at the minute, making the days quite full on, quite difficult. Stand off on the windows. I've got the pills, the, the change right now on the pills. So that's already affecting me a bit. And when I left the building, I think, yeah, it was Thursday, Thursday lunchtime. And the leaseholders and other tenants were all out there having a meeting on the front lawn with people from the um, 
the building management team and the site manager, the one who made me have an elbow greeting, tried to get me to have another one last Thursday. I told him one was enough and that, you know, that was more than anyone else had got in these last seven months. And I'd forgotten there was a meeting. I saw some silhouetted figures outside through the, um, the pane of the front door and I wondered what was going on. I'd seen the email a couple of days earlier, but because I'd made my decision on the windows, I wasn't concerning myself with it. And then I stepped outside and I just thought it would be the decent thing to do to just stop there and see what they were all discussing. And right now, you know, given the mellow mood that these chemicals leave me in more often than not, I didn't really feel I needed a segue to get myself involved in the meeting. In fact, I just made the meeting about me right away, which was quite selfish. I think the way I spoke to those guys outside, even though they deserved it, most of them, and I'm talking about the building managers because they're absolutely hopeless at their job and they haven't bothered emailing back at all. They just wait to see if they can call your bluff and get the work done right at the end without having the decency to negotiate with you. And the overconfidence there on my part, I know that that's the pills because that's not me. I'm not that way inclined. I wish I was actually because I don't mind that side to my medication era character. I could have done with a lot more of that in my life had it not been chemically enhanced. Last year, winter, it took four or five months to adjust to the increased dose. So my mood was up and down day in, day out. And it was a rocky period. It was another four months after that before I could probably write again, though by which time I had calmed down mood-wise. And on the writing front, that was a shame because the preceding year, writing-wise, I'd been flying, you know, I'd been uh, I'd sold two or three plays, had those short plays on, and the pills definitely curtailed that. But it was a case of uh, putting my life, my personal life, before my writing career because I just wasn't functioning. On my way to my aunt's on Thursday, or was it Wednesday? No, actually it was Wednesday. I've got the days wrong here. I'd run into the building managers on Thursday. Wednesday after my eye test, that was it because I told you last week about the fabric mask. I bought it. I hadn't worn it till Thursday. It fits better, but does pull the ears out. And I think that given that there are quite a few people now wearing these fabric masks, and I'm assuming that many of them are having the same issues that I'm having with their ears being pulled out of shape. And if we're going to be wearing these basically for the rest of our lives, then I'm wondering whether that will have a permanent effect on the ears, whether it will mean that our ears gradually start sticking out. That would be a terrible look. If I was training to be a cosmetic surgeon, I think that I would specialize now in pinning ears back. That's where the money's going to be, I think, owing to these uh, fabric masks. And I debuted the fabric mask as I left the building on Thursday morning. I pulled it down and socially distanced myself to speak to the housing people and the uh, leaseholders and tenants, which was silly, really. But I just thought they already think I'm especially paranoid being the only flat not to agree to the windows. Let's uh, try and show them I'm a bit laid back, which I'm certainly not. And as I tried to pull the mask down, which wasn't easy, I did hear a neighbor say, that looks tight, as I struggled to lower the mask. I'm just not sure what I can do about the ears sticking out. Don't think I'll be able to tie a knot in these fabric loops the same way that I do with the disposable masks. The plus of the fabric mask is it's a snug fit. It's comfortable, though there is slippage from the nose. The anchoring on the bridge of the nose isn't as effective as it is on the disposable masks. You can't really pinch it onto the nose. It just doesn't stay. My first noticeable visual encountered in the mask was while heading out in the rain. I was walking north on Railton Road approximately 12.41 hours. This is still Thursday, 1st of October. And uh, Railton Road, of course, has that low traffic neighborhood scheme that's been in the news a lot lately. Listen to the voice. When I start editing this and I hear it, I think it's an issue with the laptop. It's actually an issue with the voice warbling. I saw the classic Lambeth visual on Railton Road of the unemployed male riding a child's bike on the pavement. Lambeth never lets you down. Jumping forward to Friday, Friday morning, I'd arranged a call back from the GP to talk about the change on the meds mainly. You know, I had to write everything down. I had to plan it in my diary, the way this changeover 
is going to happen. And that is going to be the only way to try and tackle the tinnitus. And uh, he broke it all down for me. So I wrote it all down in details and copied it over into the diary because it's going to be a uh, going to be a very tricky period. But it all sounds fairly clear. So I'm on half the dose at the minute. Feeling it. I have to say I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it in the body. I feel heavy for the first time in a long time. I've overslept this morning. I'm normally up by seven. I got up uh, just after eight this morning, which is pretty bad for me. And it's left me chasing my tail right away. But I could be worse. I think I'd anticipated being worse, but it's going to be trickier in the coming weeks because this is just the start of it. So I'd arranged for the call back from the GP. I'd spoken to the receptionist there on Friday morning in whose voice I could detect a hint of surprise that I have made it this far into the pandemic. My GP called back. We spoke about what I have to do and how things were. And I asked him about the windows. I thought I'd take the opportunity to get his advice on it because, you know, the advice that I sought several weeks ago and the advice that I was given that, you know, I could risk it. I wasn't rubbish in that. I think that advice was relevant a few weeks ago. But the situation in London is just getting worse. And my hunch from the beginning was that this was work that shouldn't be done right now. Given the numbers right now, though, in the last seven to 10 days, I just thought I'm right. My hunch is right here. This is not the time to be doing this kind of work indoors five days, 40 hours a week. Well, one week, 40 hours in your flat. Just, it's madness. And my GP said that it was within my rights to refuse the work and that it was sensible to do so right now. You know, he didn't say you shouldn't get it done. He just said, it's sensible. You're being sensible. Chances are nothing would happen, but why risk it? You know, in a library, I'm in and out, kind of. But this is going to be, I'm going to be in the flat when I got these strangers in. They'd never given me any information back on whether they were bringing a portaloo. I can't see a portaloo out there. So where the... You know, where are they going to the loo? Because the cafe across the road, they said that they had an arrangement with. That's not even reopened yet. Even my sibling said to me last week, you've frozen for several winters in that flat. You can freeze again. Don't let the work go ahead. Now, obviously, they may try and bring to bear pressure on the ex who owns the flat. And I don't want to mess things up for her. But as things stand to her credit, she's left it to me as I live here. But we'll see how that uh, pans out. I mean, are they going to come back and just put scaffolding up just to do this flat? Probably not. But, you know, they shouldn't have taken people for granted. They shouldn't have assumed that everyone was going to be OK with this work. And the only reason everyone else is letting them in is because they're so bad at their job. I think people are just exasperated and they're wondering, well, if we don't let them do it now, they're just going to say, well, look, we tried to do it. We wanted to do it. We were ready to do it. You know, in the pandemic era, you said no. And, you know, two, three years on probably still won't be done. And I just think they thought they've got to suffer it. And that's fine. But I'm not. You know, I've got no emotional attachment to this place. You know, every penny I've sunk into this place has just gone down the pan. Uh, that's it. My primary concern is my health and just keeping warm. Keeping warm, that's not going to be possible this winter. But I've just got to accept that. I think it might be the easiest option out of the two. I just... Long term, I need to find a way out of this place. And I don't know how, but I need to, because I think until I do, I don't make any progress, certainly on a personal level. I just don't like being here since I moved here. Not like being here. I don't like the area. I don't like being here. I've spent every single night here since, you know, since the day I moved in. Not once have I slept elsewhere. And it just still doesn't feel like a home. Actually, I have slept elsewhere once. That was uh, the night of my cousin's wedding actually no that was two nights in a hotel that's uh, that's a while back but it's horrible to be going back to a place that just doesn't feel like a home and you know to be fair that's something i've experienced in most of the places that i've lived in since actually leaving home 20 years ago it's just you know it's like Battlestar galactica you know those guys looking for earth or new earth or whatever it is they're looking for that's me with regards to a home and uh you know, I like living in flats, but, you know, with flats, you're a hostage to fortune more than you are in a house. You're very dependent on having decent neighbours above and below you. And I just find most people, particularly the ones that come from houses to flats, they have no idea how to adapt to living in flats. And they're just noisy. 
And, you know, it goes beyond living noise. And that's the problem. And I think, you know, if I did have the money, which I certainly don't and probably never will, I'd just get a house and just think, OK, I've just got to worry about the side of the house now and any noise there. But upstairs, downstairs, that's all going to be me. But what am I going to do? Get a big house for myself? Am I going to be like Gatsby? I just need to find a way, uh, way out of this. For now, though, today, just uh, today is all about seeing if I can just get the show out. See uh, if I can uh, catch my aunt and see if I can finally speak to these housing people to confirm a time for my aunt tomorrow. Just get out for the run after editing this show, clear my head just from, well, just clear it from life, I suppose. I'm going to be trying a new app today on the running, trying something called RunKeeper because Strava just is not working. 45 minute run on Friday night. It recorded, I think, 12 minutes. Just rubbish, really. And I'm just not great with the armband. I think the first 200 meters, I was still trying to get the armband on. And at the end of the run in the dark, because the keys don't fit into the key slot. You know, again, another armband. The space for keys, like I said last week, am I the only guy with the chub key? So I've been putting the keys in a slot that is not for the keys. It's just behind the mobile phone. So that cuts into the arm a bit. Not so much because at the moment and likely through the winter, I'm going to be wearing three tops for the running but it's not a slot for the keys. And as I took the armband off in the rain last week to try and stop the Strava app before I knew it wasn't working, the keys just fell out in the grass and I couldn't find them. I'd heard where they fell, so I was eventually able to find them by, you know, shining my mobile on the grass. And of course, who knows what it had fallen on. So the keys, when I got in, went into a cup of bleach. The cup was thrown out afterwards. Not a cup that I use anyway, and I wash my hands about uh, half a dozen times. Uh, just looking at my phone, LinkedIn, Barry Venison is now a connection. There you go. Let's see if that actually helps the uh, new football show, which is already losing followers on Twitter. Give that account some love. That shorts were short. How difficult is it to be successful? It's just incredible. Just successful at social media. That's not too much to ask, is it? Where was I now? I was talking about, uh, yeah, the keys had fallen out. I reckon I did on Friday. I reckon now, knowing myself, knowing my body, I did about 8K, I think, in the wind and the rain, which is far easier for me than warmer weather. And it gave me a momentum. You know, it really did. Because it's got that edge of discomfort. Whereas the heat, I just find attritional. It's uncomfortable it's full-on uncomfortable but the wind and the rain at the moment at this stage where it's not so cold i think the word i was trying to say there before the throat went was at this stage stage i've lost my thread now let me just push on for me it's just annoying that the app doesn't work hopefully run keeper will do a bit better for me than strava i do anticipate the change of bills will curtail the recent uh, strava which, to be fair, I've curtailed in uh, recent weeks. I've tackled it well, I think. Unless the new pills are going to plunge me into a deeper well of posing. That is, it's hard to work out who I am these last couple of chemically enhanced years. Longer than that now, actually. But I think it's good that I'm aware of it. I think it's good that I'm aware of how my behavior has been changed by these pills and the situations I've sometimes gotten myself into because of this unusually mellow feeling that I have i guess when you're on your own and this is just on the strava thing you you you're just seeking validation maybe you're just trying to remind the world that you're here and that you're doing things and you've got small achievements happening the writing has no outlet right now maybe i'm just trying to show the world you know as i say that i exist i'll see what happens with uh, run keeper hopefully that doesn't uh, turn me into an even worse show off. I don't quite understand these things anyway. Strava actually, it never made any sense to me. Many a time, it just did not make sense. And now I'm bad with numbers, I recognize that. But I'll see on Instagram, for instance, runners posting faster times, okay? Faster times than me, shorter distances running less minutes. Meantime, I'm running greater distances, but far slower. And I'm guessing some of that is gonna be down to the steep gradients where I run. And yet I'm running for longer, but I look at these fast times that other people are doing and I think, how have they run less than me? They've run faster than me and they've run for longer than me, maybe, but their time or their distance is slower, uh, is less than mine. I don't get it. Numbers confuse me. Dyscalculia. 
I don't think it's something I'm ever going to beat, really. Another weird pandemic dream yesterday morning in which I found myself in North London, Finsbury Park, visiting my old writer friend who went on to make the script that we co-wrote together in the early noughties. Uh, the film, remember, is on my YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Daniel Ruiz Tyson. And I'd got lost in North London after I left him. I'd spent a nice dream day with him and his family. In real life, I actually knew his wife and brother-in-law before I ever met him. And uh, his brother-in-law was a bit of an acquired taste. They didn't get on. First time I met my friend, the brother-in-law who was with me whispered in my ear, he uses wet wipes. Now, for context, this was 1994. Wet wipes back then was the equivalent of having a mobile in that era. It was unusual. But at the same time, I did think, why is he telling me this? Anyway, I was with my friend and his family in this stream. And when I left, he was getting into a car, didn't offer me a lift to the station. Besides which, I was getting a bus home. So I needed to work out which bus was going to get me back into South London. These days, I rarely use the underground. And I asked him quickly where the buses were. And he pointed me in the direction of an underpass. And I began walking through it. And it was full of homeless people. It reminded me of Cardboard City back in the Waterloo of the late 80s and early 90s. And I remember the first time I walked through Cardboard City in my teens. I'd heard a lot about it, so I'd avoided it. But there was one evening where I couldn't avoid it. I don't think I've seen anything like it since. It was uh, quite something. But in this dream, as with all my dreams, it's permeating all my dreams now, I was worried about social distancing and all these homeless people were asking me to buy stuff, their wares that they were trying to sell. They had stalls set up. And I was just saying, look, man, I've only got 18 Patreon supporters. I can't help you out. Sorry. I ended up uh, walking on and on and on until I came up to a dead end by this stall run by a guy and his younger brother. All I remember about what they had on their store was there was a, a copy of Time Out. That was it. I said, I'm lost. I can't buy nothing. Help me out here. We agreed a deal whereby I would give some dermatology advice to a bald pal of theirs who scalped, fissured and scaled. I recommended some creams and in exchange, he put me on the right route to get my bus home. And that was it. That was the dream. Uh, another strange dream. And that brings us up to this week's uh, Nectar Points update now the calzone conversion on saturday uh, just to tell you about that very briefly i went for the little pizza which is a thinner base just 11 minutes on gas mark seven as opposed to 15 minutes on gas mark six for the sainsbury's thin and crispy pizza as i say thinner bread i packed additional toppings it was like the tightest of kebabs when I pulled it out of the oven and did the uh, fold over, there was immediate fissure in. But uh, it was still a decent pizza. I just wish the fold over hadn't been so brutal. Have given myself a lot of milk that I need to finish today. I've got over two pints uh, to down by midnight tonight. I started on this four pinter yesterday. I was aware, I think, from Friday or no, from Saturday that it was going to be tight with this particular bottle i've got another 10 pints in the fridge and i think the uh, the latest date is 13 i was worried because i was sure that uh, the 13th this month was friday the 13th so i didn't particularly want to buy any milk that had to be drunk by that day but i realize now that i think it's uh, whatever it is it's a tuesday isn't it the 13th so i can live with that i'm gonna have a glass of milk after I finish recording this just before I start editing it and then I'll have another glass uh, later this evening so hopefully that will eat into the milk along with all the other coffee that I've uh, got to have and I've had cereal for lunch decided against uh, another bowl of porridge because uh, working off the calzone plus yesterday's bowl of porridge and another one today which I ought to have done just because it would have helped me finish the milk that just simply wasn't uh, doable okay let me give you uh, this week's Next uh, points. Uh, so I'd gone in with 223 points into this week's uh, or last week's shop rather. Uh, bought some uh, yogurt again, uh, chili sauce, had to buy some uh, sweeteners. Having quite a bit of the decaf without any uh, sweeteners, actually, so that's pleasing. But for the actual caffeinated coffee, I do still need a sweetener. So uh, they only offer the Splendor tablets, 500 for £5.60. So I always got to take the hit on that. Four single oranges too. 
Uh, total expenditure was 13 pounds 35 and 13 points, new points balance, 236 points worth one pound 18. So getting closer to that 500 barrier mark, I think that it's realistic to do that maybe in time for Christmas, get there for Christmas, you know, perhaps in time for recording the 300th show, 300th show for a show that doesn't even have 300 listeners. What a milestone that will be to hit the 500 nectar points mark in time. For Christmas. I think that's what Christmas is going to be all about uh, this year. And on that low key note, that is the end of this week's regular show. Patreon listeners, you get your weekly bonus edition, episode 275. That's on Thursday. You guys, if you want to join those patrons, maybe we can get up to 20 this week. I think for a normal show, that would be a realistic target. 18 patrons in 52 weeks of being back with their show. 75 shows in. Well, no, 74 shows. I don't even know what episode this is now. No, it's 274. 74 shows in 52 weeks and just 18 patrons. Sign up at patreon.com forward slash TRT. Available to end my ongoing disgrace. Thank you guys all for listening. Show the new football show some love on Twitter and Instagram at Shorts with Short. And uh, if you're not joining us on Thursday, I'm back next Monday with episode 276. Remember again what to do if the show is not appearing on your regular go-to platform provider. That will mean that I have begun the process of resetting the RSS feed. Still not heard back from Squarespace. I'm going to actually chase them up now. Get those shoulders back. Keep on walking towards the sun. Keep washing those hands. I'm Daniel Ruiz Tyson and this start of the week I have been available. 